Hi, Miss Christine's class. This is Lisa, your art teacher. Remember me? It's been a while since we've been together. I miss you all so very much. Emily, I miss you very much. Alexa, how are you doing? I hope you're doing fine. Alex, I know you like listening to music, but this is time for art. So we're going to do some really good stuff. And maybe later we could add art, some music to our art, okay? Andrew, how are you? Are you ready for art? And Elijah, I know you're ready for art because you love art, right? Okay. Well, I'm coming to you from down under. Australia, that is, matey. Just kidding. I'm in my office, and I'm going to be doing art from my table of art. But I understand that you're going to be learning about Australia this week during Around the World. That's the theme for this week's summer session. So I looked into a little bit about Australia, and I found out that the Aborigines did some really beautiful dot paintings. They would paint on rocks or they would paint on tree bark. So I thought it would be really cool if I got some brown craft paper and pretend it like it was tree bark and we would do our dot paintings on that. So I'm sending each of you a piece of the brown craft paper. And this is what we're going to use as our canvas to do our dot painting. I'm also going to be sending you some cotton swabs. We're going to use them to make our dots. And you're going to use either watercolors or you can use your tempera paint. And you can also use markers. You don't have to use the cotton swab. And if you have dabbers, you could use your paint dabbers to make the dots. Whatever works best or easiest for you, that's what I want you to do. So we're going to need some water if you're going to use watercolors. So I'm going to pour a little bit of water into my cup. Excuse me, I have to get my cup out. Excuse me, kitties. There we go. It's over here. And, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave you from, for a moment. Oh, okay. Let me get my cup for the water. For my watercolors. And what we're going to start out with. The Aborigines, when they painted, they used a lot of symbols to represent things. So I spilled some water on my craft paper. So I looked for something that would make kind of relate to us working together. So I found this one. It's a big circle, but then there's several circles within the circle. And there's four lines coming out of both sides. That symbolizes the meeting place. So I thought about us all meeting again to, in, at First Children Services, our school. So I considered that our meeting place. So I'm using that symbol. And above it, on the top and on the bottom, I'm using their symbol for rainbow. Because rainbows always make me feel really good and happy. So I thought if I had the rainbows and our meeting place, place and all of us together in the meeting place, I'd be so happy. So I thought that's what we would do today. We'd use those two symbols. Now, generally... When the Aborigines would do their paintings, they got a lot of their colors from the earth, the ochre from the earth. And that was a lot of earthy tones, like your browns, orange, the rust colors, yellow, reds. So normally they would use just those colors. But later on, they started incorporating more colors, like the greens and blues, things that signify color, fire, water. So we're going to use all the colors in our rainbow. And I just spilled all the water on my table. But that's okay. I'm going to use it to start painting. <laughs> okay. Now, if you're using the cotton swabs, uh, what you're going to do is dip it into your watercolors. But you have to wake up your watercolors by adding water. So if you put a little bit of water right into the watercolors, That'll saturate the paint, and all you'd have to do is dip the cotton swab into the water. Okay? Alex, you paying attention? I know you are. Okay. Emily, I know you love my art classes, and use whatever works best. If you have a dabber, use that. Um, I have most of my dabbers are at school. I could have, We could have used them. I could have sent them home with you. So let me get a board. Hang on one second so I could show you what I'm doing or I'm going to rearrange my camera. So hold on. I'm going to set my camera 
so you could see what I'm doing. So give me a minute. Okay, so I accidentally spilt all my water. So I'm dipping my cotton swab and I'm going to start with, I think the red color. So I'm gonna add a little water to the red, a little water to the orange and a little water to the yellow. For the meeting circle, I'm going to use the earth tones that the Aborigines usually paint it with. So I'm going to get some paint on the tip of my Q-tip and I'm going to start where I made the circle and I'm just going to be dabbing dots of color. Can you see my red dots of color? If you can go close to the other dots, that's great. But try to follow the line that you see or if you trace a line with a paper plate or turn a bowl upside down to create the circle, that would work best. Find something that's big and round that covers most of your craft paper. And you don't have to make any more circles than that because we're gonna make the circles with our paint as we go along. And if you make a mistake, don't worry like I just did. I think the problem is I may have added too much water to my palette, but that's okay. So continue making the dots going around this symbol, which if you remember, symbolizes the meeting place. And for me, that's our school. I want to meet with you again at our school where we could work together doing all our art activities Listening to music. Remember we were listening to music when we were relating one of our artists, Kandinsky, to music? Okay, so the outside circle is red. But I'd like to start the inside circle with a different earthy tone. I'm going to go with the orange. So I'm not going to go too far from the red circle when I start making my orange dots. You see how I'm doing it close together and following the same circle that I first did with the red dots. And you have to keep refreshing the paint. This project takes some time. It's not a project that you're going to rush through. You can take your time. It's a little therapeutic. Give you something to do. Keep yourselves busy. Keep your minds occupied. Add some color to your daily life. Aboriginal paintings are absolutely beautiful, very earthy and organic with the earth tones and their symbols. A lot of times they use animals in their paintings, the tortoise, lizards, even kangaroos, because we know that kangaroos come from Australia. So how about yellow? Should I use yellow for my next color? I think so too. That's the next organic earthy tone. And it shows up really nice on the craft paper, as would magic marker. If you wanna use markers, which I think I might stop midway just to see how the marker would look on the paper. If you wanna try marker, look how nice this is coming out. So we just continue around the circle until we get to the middle. This is all the Aboriginal paintings. Now you see how we're using dots? There's another painting that was during the Impressionist period. He painted with lots of dots as well, and his name was Surratt. He did some beautiful paintings with just dots, and he would sit for hours and hours and hours using dots to create his paintings. But he used his dots in a different way. Aboriginal art, you see the colors, red, orange, yellow. But when Surratt used his, did his paintings with his dots, he would use the dots close together to create new colors. Like for instance, if I wanted to make orange, I would put many dots of red and yellow together. So if you were looking from a distance, it would appear that it's orange that I'm looking at because the red dots and the yellow dots were placed so close together, it was the illusion that I was seeing orange. That's what Surratt did with his dots. Aborigines, they did the actual colors. They weren't trying to make create an illusion. They were just trying to create a beautiful painting. Oh, 
Now, I, we would just continue now probably with the red. We would go back to the red and continue the circular direction, making our dots until we got to the very center. So now I'm, I'm going to stop here for a second and I like to just go and work on the rainbow because that rainbow is really pretty and it makes me feel good when I see rainbows. So let me move my camera up a little bit so you can see the rainbow. All right, for the rainbow, I'm going to start with red because when you say the rainbow colors, it's Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv is a way of remembering the order of the colors on the rainbow. Roy R is for red. O is for the orange. Y is yellow. That's Roy. Then you have G, which is green. Roy G. Biv. Biv is blue. I is indigo and violet. So Roy, we did our red now. We have all our red dots in the rainbow. O stands for orange. So now we're going to place orange dots in our rainbow. And we have the symbol of the rainbow right next to our symbol of the meeting place, which was done by the Aborigines. They created these symbols so they could communicate with each other. Next is our yellow dot in the order of the rainbow. Yellow. Sort of like cave paintings. That was the way they communicated back in the caveman days. They would paint pictures of, say, animals where they knew that they can go hunting. If they seen animal paintings on the caves, they knew there were animals in the area that they could hunt for. Or fire. They'd know that something happened with a fire. There was all the different communications in the cave wall paintings. Horses. Okay, so this is the green is the next color in the rainbow. Then we're going to do blue. I'm wetting my Q-tips. I'm dipping it in the color. You could go back and refresh them. Now, once this dries, all you'll see is the color. You won't see all the wet spots that I'm creating. It's a little bit messy, but don't worry. It'll dry beautiful. And purple, violet, indigo would be my last color for the rainbow. And here we go. Okay, so the rainbow's done. We could go back and we could continue with our dots in the center until we filled up all the area within the center and remember they didn't have construction paper to paint on they used tree bark they used rocks they had to use whatever they had they didn't just go to the store and buy the the things that they needed for their art supply all right i used a lot of water here Try not to use as much water as I did. I saturated my paints a little bit too much, which is creating puddles on my painting. And that's actually because I spilt it by mistake. So, okay, whoopsie. So continue making your dots, create your symbols. If you don't want to do the meeting place, which I did, you can do animals, you could do anything you want. I'm going to stop for now and I'm going to come back and talk to you. So hold on one second. Okay, I'm back now. So just continue making the dots, following your pattern until you get to the center. Then you start on your side lines. Use whatever colors you want. There's no right or wrong here. It's what you like. You can make bigger dots if you have a, dip, a bigger stamper. You could draw an animal and, and you could use that as your dot picture. But when it's done... It should look something like this. This one I did was the meeting place and water running. That's what the blue on the side is. That was really pretty. I enjoyed doing that one. And I hope you enjoy doing your painting as well and learning about Australians and the Aborigines and the, the kangaroos with the little babies in the pouch. Australia has some really great places there. So learn as much as you can. 
enjoy it as much as you can. And just remember what I always say about art. Just have fun. Relax. Don't let it stress you out. Relax and enjoy it. Okay, guys. Emily, Alex, Alexa, Ander, Elijah. This is Miss Lisa saying ciao for now from my table of art. I miss you all very much and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye from down under Australia.